You guys welcome to episode number 9 of the Derby Current Life and to start off this episode we're currently in 10th on the table and we also have a game in hand since we are in the Carabao Cup quite a late stage now um, going into the next game against Chelsea of course next month um, so yeah if we do win the game we can go up to 27 points just below the playoffs where uh, Nottingham Forest take up that final playoff spot with 29 points so we do ideally need to win this first game which is against Middlesbrough who are currently all the way down in 20th so a good opportunity to beat a team that aren't exactly doing too well so far. Um, obviously, because it's the international break, for some reason, there's still fixtures, as you can see here on the calendar. The international break finishes around here, um, but for some reason, we're playing this game now, which I'm not 100% sure, maybe because we are in the Carabao Cup still, um, the fixture list just isn't um, simulated correctly. But nevertheless, we're going to have to do without players such as Lawrence and uh, Keo and Ledley. Into the first game then of the episode against Middlesbrough at the Riverside. It would be nice to kick it off with a win. Obviously, it'll put us just below the playoffs. Um, we're going to go for the home kit. Obviously, Middlesbrough still have a very good team, so we're going to have to be careful. So, I'd go for uh, Mason Bennett on the left. He's marginally better in uh, stats than um, Holmes, obviously, who has been quite effective from the bench, but not really performed when I've given a go from the start. Obviously, Mason Bennett with, like, plus six finishing and... Uh, not quite as good uh, dribbling, but pretty much about the same. Here's the Middlesbrough team then for today's game. Lonergan in gold, Bath and Ayala in the middle. Shotten, Friend, Ledbetter, House and Besic and uh, Downing and Peridiago. I'm not 100% sure who he is on the right. And uh, Braithwaite up top. There is no Sombolonga and Randolph. Obviously Ayala and Shotten used to be Derby players as well. So um, it's still a very good team. There's no Aidan Flint as well, which I'm quite, kind of surprised not to see in the team. But nevertheless, still a very good team. And um, we've not exactly got the best strength team at the minute, obviously because of international duty. Decided to go for Wisdom at centre-back, just want to see how that does. Very good strength now, he's got about 88 strength and uh, slightly better tackling stats than Tamori, the other option. Chance here for Malone, he's in a good bit of space, can he get the shot off? Yes he can, it is in the back of the net. First 20 minutes, good start to the game. And I must say, Wisdom at centre-back is actually quite decent. And uh, Mason Bennett's actually creating quite a bit on that left forward position but it is Scott Malone with the first goal I think it's his first Derby County goal as well for us that's good of course uh, he's slightly slightly good at this position I must say like six foot two and very good pace really nice ball there from uh, I think Jack Marriott and then uh, pretty good finish for a left back last attack here for Borough in the last minute gonna have to be careful Braithwaite's here with the shot saved by Simon it's a corner 40 seconds over the uh, allotted time but we're gonna have to deal with this if we're going to get the win. It's gone into a deep area with the header and it's gone wide. Thank God for that. I, when that hit the net, I thought that went in for a second, but uh, we've gotten away with it. Probably deserved, I must say. Like, if you look at the stats, Mason Bennett could have very easily made it 2-0. Seven shots on target for us. Pretty, pretty decent possession. Scott Malone, easily man of the match. Very good on that left back position. And, uh, yeah, Mason Bennett was quite decent when, when he had the stamina. It's just unfortunate that he doesn't really have the best. Bit of growth to our youth player already. We've added him to the uh, training sessions, of course. Um, it's kind of a shame that you can't have like youth training and first team training because you kind of have to select what you want. But then again, it is quite OP at the same time. So you don't want to be able to uh, upgrade everything all at once. As you can see, only two points off the playoffs now. We do have Sheffield Wednesday next. So opportunity if we do win that game and potentially a team above us do drop points we can go in monthly scout update them from both of our scouts um straight away what we do is just obviously anyone for example this guy here very low potential same with this guy we'll reject him um generally under under 90 is what i don't bother to keep this guy looks really nice um so we will actually sign him so i've actually signed quite a few players to the uh, youth academy just so we get an idea of what kind of rating it's kind of hard to tell on the actual scout reports um and as you can see there's very good potentials, but in terms of rating, most of them below 50. But we have got a couple here in uh, Stefan Russo. Um, very nice cam from Romania, of course. Very good potential as well. And uh, this guy called exactly this, pretty much the same name, but they changed the last letter in both of them. That's quite funny, to be honest. Um, but yeah, very good agility. And um, at 51 rating, you could easily get that up to 70 by the end of the season. We also have this left mid here, Lakata, who looks quite decent. Not the best sprint speed, but... I didn't really look at stats at the time being. Obviously, he's only 60 rated. Probably, I think he is actually the highest rated in this uh, youth academy. So, yeah, we'll, we'll look to uh, build these players up and hopefully eventually get them into the first team. Obviously, the youngsters that are under 16 can't actually play yet, I don't think. You can actually play 16-year-olds, so you, 
they just have to be 16 to uh, be able to play for the first team. Into the next game then against Sheffield Wednesday, I'm going to have a quick look where they are in the table. Not above us, so they are going to be below us down in 13th. They're still reasonably close, they're only 5 points off us, so it's not exactly a massive difference. And it is at Hillsborough of course, so away from home again. Going to have to see how we do. Luckily now we've got the players back from international duty, so that should help us a little bit. Um, I think I'd have to go probably for the home kit to be honest. Here's the Sheffield Wednesday team then, Westwood in goal, Palmer, Pudil, Hector and Fox in the defence. Then in the midfield you've got Hutchinson and uh, Pelu Pessi, George Boyd and uh, Matthias on the wings. Adam Reach who scored the absolute fucking scream at the weekend against um, Leeds. Ridiculous volley just out of nothing. And uh, the former Derby man Sammy Winnell up top. I was kind of tempted you know to sign him because he's that kind of player that he's championship level and I actually really enjoyed him uh, last year on the Derby Crow mode so... Bit of a shame, obviously, we didn't sign on a permanent, but obviously we brought in Waggon and uh, Marriott. This camera keeps jumping about. I don't know if it's because of the stadium that we're in and uh, the camera settings that I've got, but it's a good ball here, and it has found the back of the net. It is Matthias with the goal. Really nice volley, to be fair, to make it one in the first 15 minutes. But the way the camera almost like zooms in and zooms out is really kind of distracting in a way, but uh, good ball into the box, and... That's kind of ultimate difficulty. They, they will just hit the back of the net every single time. And uh, if they hit it cleanly, it will go in. Ball back in. Winnell's on the end of it. And he has found the back of the net to make it 2-0. It's kind of written in the stars of play. He does tend to score against his former club quite often. And um, yeah, he has made it 2-0. Made it quite difficult for us to kind of get back into this game. I've never come back from a 2-0 deficit before. As you can see, quite decent on the wings. Nice one-two plays. And... Uh, I don't know what Curtis Davis was really doing. I kind of would want him to be a bit closer and tighter to the man. Fifth goal this season for Sam. And a uh, very tough place to come back for us now. Corner into the near post. Curtis Davis with the flick on into the back post where Wisdom has found the back of the net. We should probably go for the ball and uh, attempt to try and come back in this game. We've got about 10 minutes left. It's Joseph soon. Through for Bennett. Is he onside with the finesse shot? Hits the back of the net. And we're level. I thought it was offside. I genuinely thought we were offside. But Mason Bennett with a last minute equaliser to make it 2-2 and to rescue a point hopefully. I genuinely, I don't know how he wasn't offside, I genuinely thought he was offside there um, because the play almost like stopped for a second but that's football at the time, maybe the defence got confused but as you can see here, uh, both to Joseph soon, I'm really surprised that's not offside but uh, I'll take it. And there we go, full time against Sheffield Wednesday, surprisingly rescuing a point in the final 10 minutes with goals from Wisdom and uh, Bennett, especially, definitely against the run of play um, we went to a 4-2-4, four, four. I don't know if I can show you the formation right now, um, but it was kind of crazy, I'm not going to lie, the formation I decided to go for, I'll try and show you quickly. So just looking at the calendar, we've actually played three home games in a row now, I'm not 100% sure if that Swansea, Swansea's at home, um, and I'm still not 100% sure, I think that's actually at home against Chelsea, so that's the, that's the run of things, sometimes you get a couple of home games in a row, um, but at the minute we're just playing away, 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 so let's go into the game against Stoke, obviously against the former Derby man, Gary Rowett. Let's see if we can uh, keep this positive run of form going on. At least a draw would be more than enough. Obviously, Stoke are um, top, maybe top two, I think. Yeah, top of the table on 45 points. So a very good test. And if we could nick a win, we could potentially go into the playoffs. Okay, we are then against Stoke at the, uh, I think it's the Bet365, to be honest. I think they renamed the stadium. Oh, no, it's the Stoke City Stadium now. I, I, I think it's because it's a betting site. You can't actually call it on FIFA. Uh, but nevertheless, looking at our team, we've actually made a few changes. I've decided to go for Keogh in the defence, push Wisdom to that right-back spot. Um, Ledley coming in in the midfield for Mount, who's a bit low on fitness. Also gone for Waggon at right forward. I want to I want to see how he does in this game. Maybe not the best tester against top of the league, Stoke. But then again, we've got nothing to lose, so why not? Federici in goal. Joe Allen at right-back. Bit strange, not going to lie. Um, Martina at uh, left-back, Shawcross and Williams. Very good, experienced defenders. Etebo, Sorensen, Rhodes in the middle, then Bojan, Ince and uh, Juf up top. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty sure Tom Ince is going to score in this game. It's, it's the kind of thing, obviously, Winnell in the last one. Um, I'm sure another former Derby County player will score again. Ball across here to Wisdom, across now to Bryson with the shot early. Hits the post, now into Marriott who finds the back of the net. The poacher makes it 1-0 in the first 10 minutes to make a uh, good start against Gary Rowett, of course. Stoke City side and... Um, I'm kind of kind of glad that he's got that goal as well because he was a bit uh, not too active in the last couple of games. So it was nice to see him in the right place at the right time. Makes it 1-0 and that is his fourth goal in only about five or six games to be fair. 
with some danger. Bryson inside to Wisdom. Now into Marit with the shot and with the goal makes it 2-0 and it's absolute um, carnage at the back for Stoke. Obviously Joe Allen at right back just isn't working and uh, Jack Marit's got two in literally about two minutes game time. Not 100% sure what Wisdom was doing playing essentially right forward but he uh, held off short cross really nicely with his strength of course and uh, slipped it through for Marit to make it 2-0. To get us in a great position. Stoke with the ball on the edge here. Tabo with the shot and the Tabo with the goal to make it 2-1 on the score sheet. And um, yeah, I was saying like how Sheffield Wednesday were 2 up and we managed to bring it back. So I don't see why top of the league um, Stoke can't do it. A very nice strike from the Nigerian. Eighth goal of the season. That's crazy from midfield. He's playing like essentially a CDM role and uh, eight goals for him. That's more than any of our players. Bryson with the ball here into Waghorn. Being taken down in the box and has... Won a penalty, Shawcross with the foul on Waghorn, did nicely to uh, hold up the board and obviously Shawcross just being a little bit too aggressive and um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a penalty, I'm kind of tempted to give it uh, Marriott because he can obviously get the uh, hat trick, but then Waghorn's got a lot better penalties and he did kind of win it, so I'm going to give it Waghorn just because we are in a bit of a, like if we score this we put ourselves in a good comfortable position and the keeper saved it, of course he has, oh this game. Half time against Stoke, then obviously we did miss that penalty with Waggon. It wasn't the best penalty in the world. I probably should have gone to that right hand side and got his foot behind it properly. But uh, nevertheless, a good first half. Other than their goal, they haven't really done too much. Bit of a fitness issue to both uh, Thorne and Bryson, but we've got options on the bench. And there we go, full time against Gary Rowett. We have beaten him 2 1 and made it back to back. Um, well, good results anyway. We we drew in the last game, but it was a good a good comeback and back-to-back -back performances, if anything. Um, only one shot on target for them, 4-4, four -four, as obviously maybe should have given Jack Merritt that penalty um, and he could have got off ourselves our uh, first ever hat-trick. George Lund not uh, feeling up to the next game against Swansea. Also, um, Simon now happy with the amount of games he's playing, so that's good to see, of course, because we don't want him to go anywhere. Now, these ratings do actually update as you go along. So, for example, we've got a few here. Still very good uh, ratings in terms of um, potentials, but there's a certain uh, Conti here, only 43 rating. I'm going to actually release... Or do I just leave him until he's 16? I'll probably just leave him until he's 16, because maybe he'll grow a little bit in that uh, next year. But uh, overall, I'm quite happy with what we got at the minute. I don't think we need to do anything. We'll just leave it there and uh, see what happens. Even with that win against top of the table, then we're still just outside the playoffs, but we are playing Swansea next, who are on 33 points. So if we win our game... We go on to 34, so we can go above them. So essentially, we win this game and um, we can go into the playoffs. However, because this is um, two days before the Chelsea game, I kind of want to play a weaker team, especially with, with us being at home. We can do that. Um, it will still have good players, but not, not quite as good. But I think I'll leave it for the next episode. It's been quite an eventful one so far. And... Um, I definitely want to get this video up for you guys today. I've actually just recorded this after the Bolton game, so it's going to be a quick turnaround. And obviously, we only played three games, but they're still quite high scoring. We've got a couple of, we've got four goals in that game, only the one no in the Borough game, and uh, the three in the Stoke game. So overall, performance-wise, I'm very happy, and I don't want to finish off the episode with a loss against Swansea, then go into the next episode. It's kind of like a warm-up game for that Chelsea game, essentially. That's that's what I kind of want in the next episode. So hopefully, guys. Did enjoy this episode make sure you do leave a like rating if you did enjoy obviously we're in december now so we're only we're only a month away from january it's as simple as that so make sure you leave some comments on any signings and uh, see you soon bye